Though we may get a bit bent from time to time, we shall never be beaten. The semi-automatic assault-style rifle. Well, to buy an assault rifle. Military-style assault rifles. Fully functional semi-automatic assault rifles from an assault rifle. Assault rifles. The word assault rifle has been in the public ear for quite some time, and it's been used to describe a multitude of different weapons. From the AR-15 to, according to Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, a single-shot 22 caliber gun known as the Buttmaster. But the word assault rifle actually has a very clear and specific definition. So what are assault rifles, and where do they come from? Now before we start, it's worth noting that assault rifles are not the same thing as assault weapons, or assault style weapons. Both of these are popular phrases with certain political leaders. Both of these phrases have varying definitions and are often used to describe the appearance of a rifle, rather than its actual capabilities, although sometimes they're used just as a blanket term to describe all semi-automatic rifles. The definitions of assault weapons and assault style weapons are not as rigid or well-defined as that of an assault rifle. Now, there are three main requirements for what constitutes a firearm to be an assault rifle. If it does not meet one or more of these requirements, it is not an assault rifle. Firstly, the rifle must be a select fire firearm. This means it can switch from semi-automatic to fully automatic fire. Semi-automatic fire means the firearm will fire once every time the trigger is pulled, and the gun will eject the spent cartridge, recock the rifle, and load another cartridge to be fired. However, it will only fire once when the trigger is pulled, and the trigger must be pulled again for another round to be fired. Fully automatic firearms, on the other hand, will continuously fire as long as the trigger is pulled, or until the firearm runs out of ammunition. A select fire rifle can switch between these two modes of fire. Now, some selective fire firearms will feature a burst fire mode instead of an automatic fire mode, where the rifle will fire a burst of a fixed number of rounds, typically two or three rounds per burst. The second requirement for an assault rifle is that it must have a detachable box magazine. A magazine is what stores the ammunition on a firearm, and it usually, but certainly not always, will be inserted somewhere on the bottom side of the firearm. Now a box magazine is the most common type of magazine found in firearms, and it has some form of a rectangular box shape, although some box magazines, such as those found on the AK-47 for example, will have a curved rectangular shape. In order for a rifle to be considered an assault rifle, it must have a box magazine which can be detached from the firearm. This is an important distinction since some firearms will have an internal box magazine, such as the Russian SKS. Assault rifles cannot have an internal box magazine to be qualified as assault rifles. The third and last requirement for a rifle to be an assault rifle is that it must fire an intermediate cartridge. This means that assault rifles will be quite effective at a medium and close range and will typically be effective on targets at a maximum of around 400 to 500 yards depending on the rifle. Many rifles that do not use intermediate cartridges but still meet the other two requirements such as the FNFAL will be mistaken for assault rifles, however they would be classified rather as battle rifles. Now, battle rifles, however, do not have super stringent requirements, and as such, some battle rifles will be semi-automatic or have internal box magazines, such as the famous M1 Garand. Assault rifles, on the other hand, are quite specific in their characteristics. So, now that we know what assault rifles are, where do they come from, and what is their history? The world's first successful assault rifle was the famous German Sturmgewehr 44. Please don't blame me for mispronouncing that, I'm not German. Better known as the STG 44. In fact, Sturmgewehr means assault rifle in German, and it's where the term comes from. The term might have been thought up by Adolf Hitler himself during the development of the STG 44 during the Second World War. Although it was the first successful assault rifle, it was not technically the first, as the STG was an improvement of the MKB-42 automatic carbine, which was produced in 1942. The MKB-42 had been designed by Hugo Schmeiser, 
someone who had been considering the idea of an assault rifle for quite some time. You see, during the First World War, Schmeiser had figured out that full-powered rifles using full-powered rounds were too bulky and just too big to effectively attack and clear trenches. And so, he began work on a much lighter, more compact machine gun, one using pistol ammunition. Such a weapon would not be effective at long ranges like its full-powered counterparts, but it would be particularly effective in short-range trench combat. The result was the Machinen Pistol 18, otherwise known as the MP18. The MP18 was a very important and effective weapon and proved extremely popular among German trench raiders. Fast forward to 1938 and the German Army's Ordnance Division has created a new intermediate cartridge that would be able to be used in a carbine rifle, that is, a lighter rifle with a shorter barrel length, but would still be effective at 400 yards, much further than pistol rounds used on machine pistols. The new round was named the 7.92 by 33mm Kurtz. The Army contracted Hanel, the firm for which Hugo Schmeiser happened to work as chief design engineer, to create a new automatic carbine rifle using this new intermediate range round. The result was the MKB-42, or Machinen Carabiner 42, a rifle which proved immensely popular with frontline troops when it was received in 1942. However, the silly mustache man was less keen on the rifle, especially the Kurtz ammunition it used, as he favored machine pistols such as the MP40 and full-powered cartridge weapons such as the MG34 and MG42, and he believed the new Kurtz ammunition would divert resources from creating other, more widespread rounds. The German army, however, decided that the rifle was just too good to cancel, and so they decided to do a little trolling, and had it redesignated a machine pistol, the MP43, in 1943. By the time Hitler figured out what was going on, the troops had given such good feedback on the rifle that he had to concede, and the MP43 and the newly improved MP44 were renamed the Sturmgewehr or STG-44. The STG-44 sported a 16.5-inch barrel and a weight of around 11 pounds. Although it held a 30-round magazine, German soldiers typically operated it with just 25 rounds to prevent jamming issues. Firing 500 rounds per minute, the STG-44 had a range of around 200 to 300 yards, although this increased when switched to semi-automatic fire. It proved a very popular and effective weapon, however by the time the newest variant was introduced in 1944, Germany was already well on their way to losing the war, and a new rifle wasn't going to change that. Yet, despite the outcome of the war for its German users, the STG-44 was a revolutionary weapon nonetheless, and marked a new age of small arms combat. The STG-44 would go on to influence numerous assault rifles in the victorious allied nations. Most notably, a Russian designer named Mikhail Kalashnikov would be influenced by the design and the function of the STG-44 when designing his own assault rifle for the new Soviet 7.62x39mm intermediate cartridge. His rifle was very similar to the Sturmgewehr 44, utilizing a nearly identical gas piston. His design led to the Avtomat Kalashnikova family of rifles, and in particular, the Avtomat Kalashnikova 47, or as you probably know it, the AK-47. It's probably the most well-known firearm in the history of the world. It shows just how much of an effect the STG-44 had on the world of rifles, and just how much assault rifles have changed warfare. Assault rifles have appeared in just about every major conflict since the Second World War. From M16s in Vietnam, to AK-47s in Africa, to Canadian Colt C7s in Afghanistan, assault rifles have made appearances in almost every corner of the world. Now, as I'm sure you've heard today, assault rifles are very controversial issues, especially in the United States, where a lot of people say they should be banned. However, this position doesn't really make a lot of sense beside it being an infringement, and that's because Modern assault rifles, and in fact all automatic weapons made after 1986, have been banned for most civilians since the Firearm Owners Protection Act came into effect in that same year. Now one of the stipulations of this act was that assault rifles and automatic weapons made before 1986 were grandfathered in, meaning that they're still legal for Americans to buy and own. However, because of that cutoff, they've become extremely expensive and available only to those who can afford it. Let me give you an example. A semi-automatic AK-47 is still reasonably accessible to the average American, 
while a fully automatic variant, that is, a true assault rifle, will cost upwards of $20,000. Now, there technically is still a way for civilians to get automatic weapons made after 1986, however, it involves a number of additional requirements, including obtaining a federal firearms license from the ATF, which are issued to dealers, importers, and manufacturers of firearms and the vast majority of civilians cannot buy automatic weapons made after 1986, and only the very wealthy can purchase pre-1986 automatic weapons. Automatic weapons also make up an incredibly small amount of the total firearms in the US. Of the estimated 393 million firearms in the United States, only 175,000 are legal automatic weapons. That's less than 0.05%. It's an incredibly small percentage. Now there is one rifle that millions of people around the world own that is often mistaken to be an assault rifle. This is the Armalite AR-10, the modern combat rifle, a lightweight, rugged, and versatile weapon. That combines the act now the AR-15 is undoubtedly one of the greatest fighting implements ever designed, and I believe that everyone should own an AR-15. Now that being said, the AR-15s that are available to civilians are not capable of fully automatic fire, rather they're restricted to semi-automatic fire, and therefore they don't qualify as assault rifles. The word assault rifle gets thrown around a lot today, usually by people who don't really know what it means. But not only do assault rifles have very specific definitions, but they also have a fascinating history as well, one which has changed modern warfare as we know it. 